Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a Wednesday night stream, something a little bit different. We'll do a bit of AFL footy talk tonight with uh, round one upon us. So it's nice and close now tomorrow night, the big game, Tigers Tigers versus the Blues to kick things off. But um, should be should be very, very interesting. Welcome to everybody who's tuned in so far. Grok, welcome, mate. Min, how's it going? Uh, Nick, if I remember correctly, even though I call you Ian. How are you, mate? Forrester, welcome. Punt Road, welcome. The Hound, Kanga, 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 Roo, Roo, Roo. I think it's the AFL at playing Dusty at full forward, Lynch, Jack in the pockets. I think uh, Graham is named at centre half forward as well. But um, look, I think a little bit of that is Dimmer playing funny buggers as well, which we'll, we'll get into later. Uh, I mean, prepare for the Tigers game. Oh, what do you, Min, what have you got to do ahead of the Tigers game? We'll chat for a little bit before we get stuck into the games. This will be interesting to see how this goes. I've not really ever done a pod or a show of any kind talking about all other games for the round, so I apologise in advance if the rest of the teams aren't as in-depth. It's not really about going in-depth, it's more about just general chat, and if anyone in chat follows the team, give us some insight. I've got some, I've got a, um, you can use motion array to improve your videos I've fast. got a, I've got example, nine spinning wheels lined up to select like a winner for each game, which I'm going to put into as a $1 multi, computer, so we can, can I'll tr chuck that in the Discord as well, so we can follow that. How about a snow overlay? Oh, live reacting as well. Oh, for a few, that's a good idea, hand actually, it's a very good idea. Or maybe just the perfect How are you, Josh? Welcome, mate. What's going on? Hope you're doing well. G'day, Chez. How's it going? Hope you're doing well, too. Hope everyone's had a pretty good day. Um, Hound, just, just looping back to that idea, Hound, of live reacts, that's actually a very good idea. Almost like a goggle box kind of situation. So, I think that's, that's very interesting. Um, in... Okay, I don't know if you're allowed to say or not, Min, but why isn't Cumberland playing? I find that a little bit staggering, to be honest. Uh, I thought, based on last year's form and everything that he was all but certain. The only thing I can think of is team balance, but who knows? Yeah, well, if we could do that hand, live react stream when the Kangas play play Richmond, that would be amusing. We, uh, we've we been known to do some live calls on the games as well on the podcast, but we usually reserve that for interstate games, so. But yeah, we can definitely look into that. Yeah, I know. I don't want to get into the Richmond stuff just yet. I will, because I will get to that. I'll be doing the same. <laughs> yeah, we've got a Kanga supporter. That's all right. All right, we'll get we'll get stuck into it. Like I said, it won't be. Look, I'll, it'll probably be more of a deep dive. Oh, that's very bright on me, isn't it? On the Richmond front, because I know a bit more about it, but. Um, as we go through the other games, we'll... I'm trying to see if I can reduce the contrast of this screen, because it has lit me up. Oh, the cheese we're playing, is he? That's good, that's good. Just trying to see. Look, scream. I want. I know last year, yeah, the uh, the ruse knocked off the tigers, which was a little bit annoying. Where are the bloody brightness settings on this? Uh, it could be on the actual screen itself. Hey, how are you, Sarge? Pink Panthers footy car. So yeah, God, let's not get carried away. That has lit me up something fierce. I 
wonder what that does. Does that make it too dark? Oh, you sent why? Where did you send it through to? On here or uh, on Twitch? That's on on the Discord. I'll have to look. At, I'll have to check it out. Anyway, we'll get stuck into it. On chat, okay. All right, I'll have a look at that. All right, so we've obviously got the Tigers and the Blues kicking off Thursday night football. Uh, first and foremost, what's everyone's thoughts on Thursday night football and this game in particular? Uh, even being a Richmond supporter, I don't really care for it, to be honest. I don't I don't get the hype of us playing as the opener anymore. It doesn't make sense. Like it, It's kind of run its course for me. I don't think it serves much purpose. Um, it's just management reasons. Oh, cramps. Yeah, spewing. Um, but yeah, I don't really, I've always, and I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it, to me, the opening game of the season should always be a grand final rematch. No matter who it is, I think, you know, to the ability to be able to unfurl the flag against the team you beat, you know, the supporters will be there, it'll amp them up a little bit, uh, both teams will be coming off the same preparation, I just think it makes the most sense. I know they did try it, I'm not sure why they thought it failed, um, but... I don't know, I just think this particular game's kind of run its course. I don't sort of see the need for it anymore, but it is what it is. Oh, Calypso Blue. Um, I'm not really fussed if it's a fizz. I, I just think it still makes sense. I think you can make a bit more of an, of an occasion of it, even from a broadcast perspective. You know, as I said, you've got the whole unfurling of the flag um, and all that kind of stuff. It's just a good way to, to get people in and amongst it. Yeah, that is Calypso Ocean Blue is very good, and maybe that's the other thing. Maybe there's a bit more of a behind the scenes thing where it's got to be at the G. But looking looking at the game, the Blues the Blues are going to go places this year again. I know we all laughed at their expense for what happened last year, missing the eight on the like the literally the last kick of their season, which was very very amusing to everyone involved. Um, but as much as we like to shit can them, they do have a, a semi decent team, and they're not they're not too bad. And they did us last year in round one. Um, and you know, I suppose on the podcast, man, uh, was a podcast somewhere we heard that um, that apparently we're kind of maybe not going to be at full guns blazing round one. We're kind of going to be easing into it. Some teams are going to manage their loads differently, I suppose. So it's going to be very interesting. But the lineups are in for this game, not for any other games. Obviously, we've got Hopper and Taranto, the new inclusions for the Tigers. And Carlton, we've got Blake Akers, Lockie Cowan, and Oliver Holland. So they've got two young kids coming in for their first games, um, which is really interesting. Uh, I think Holland's is definitely uh, a talented kid and has probably earned the right to play just on exposed form, even with what they've seen so far. Cowan, I'm not too sure about. I mean, you might know a bit more about Cowan. Than, uh, than other people but um, looking at our I, I think looking at our back line Bolter, Veloston, Grimes Broad, Baker, Rioli obviously no Gibkiss, no Tarrant it's I don't want to say it's undersized because, but it might be you know, when you're sort of comparing with Mackay and Kerno, that's probably going to be the big matchups, um, I think, as Dimmer alluded to in AFL 360, this is going to be very much a, uh, a team defence game, which is going to be, it's going to come down to, I think, these kind of six players in the middle being able to apply enough pressure to uh, reduce the, the ball movement going forward. But high chance of 85k. Yeah, well, I think General Admin sold out from what I've heard how, so I'm not sure how many other tickets are available, but it's meant to be a pretty good night as well in terms of weather, so that could draw a bit more of a crowd. Uh, so Grok spot on, Mackay and De Koning are the first. Kerno is a threat as well, but um, I think this is why having Miller playing is going to be of benefit to us, especially if he ends up having to do some ruck work on 
uh, to Koning if it sort of rotates that way, because he can actually defend at least. So that that's a positive. Um, but they they do have the potential to stretch us, I think. And I think Bolter on Kerno Grok, I think you're right. It just seems to make the most sense from a pound-for-pound pound type player. But if Kerno gets too high up the ground, I think you'd be happy to let him go if you're a Tiger. Yes, yeah, so I don't know why. I don't know who sends these through like this, whether the AFL pops them in. I'm pretty sure, though, this is based off what clubs send. Uh, I think. Uh, the midfield area as well. There's a couple of interesting inclusions for us. Short, Graham, um, a picket are probably the more notable three inclusions that maybe caught us a bit by surprise. What is everyone's thoughts on playing too many underdone players whether it's your own team or other teams or whatever it might be it just feels like having three players coming in two of them with no real exposed form in pre-season one coming off an injury uh, it feels a bit risky i mean in dimmer we trust i get it but i don't know like i, I love Pickett, and i think having him in the side um when he's fit is lock every day of the week but coming off these injuries with no real lead-up form, I think is flirting with danger. I'm not sure, was it last year or the year before where Graham came in off limited pre-season and was blown up by about half-time, three-quarter time? He was absolutely cooked. So that's, you know, that's the risk you run. So that's going to be interesting to see if it pays off. Uh, Mansell, yeah, is a good... I like that inclusion, Grok. Uh, after seeing his form at VFL level, I think he... Um, he adds a bit to our team. He, he'll apply some serious front-on pressure. He's a maniac. Uh, we'll probably give away a few free kicks, to be honest, but I like it. Um, looking at the Blues, obviously Mackay and Kerno up forward are the big threats. Can, uh, are capable of kicking big bags of goals, especially if their mids get things their way. Um, just man mountains. So, again, if we don't do the, the hard work defensively, it's, uh, it could undo us. Crips, dicks! Yeah, all dicks from the hound. Crips is the main one. So for anyone out there supporting teams other than Carlton, how do you, when your team plays them, how do you like to see them play against Crips? Do you believe you should be trying to tag him? Is he untaggable? I mean, he's a gun player. Not sure. Kind of like in that ablet mold, really, where you probably can't stop him from getting the ball, but maybe you can impact on how clean of a disposal he gets. Maybe that's a team's best bet on curbing Patrick Scripps' influence, because he's a star. Press your chance to be subbed off, so should be Ross's sub. Yeah, true. Wouldn't take any chances with Prestia, that's for sure. Hard to take players. Yeah, exactly right, Grok. Contested players, they're in and around the ball, so it's it does make it harder. Yeah, it's true, Hound. Don't have to tag him. Have certain players line up next to him. I just think as well, if you can apply enough pressure to Crips or any, you know, any elite inside mid, even like a Dusty or whoever, uh, as they're about to dispose of the ball, that's your best bet to curve the influence. I don't think you can actually stop them from getting the big numbers. Uh, Hugo, I think, I actually, I had Hugo in my side. I thought he was going to play. Um, same as Juddy Clark, but... Yeah, I'm not, I think they've just gone for experience over youth, to be honest, is what it looks like. Uh, Adam Chera starting on the bench seems a bit strange to me for Carlton. I, I would have thought he's probably a reasonable chance to start on the ground, uh, given the type of player he is. Uh, the other danger for them, Zach Fisher up forward, has shown a bit over the years as well. Uh, he's got a bit of, bit of toe on him. And obviously got Motlop, who's going to cause some speed issues for us as well. So it's going to be interesting to see who uh, Dan Rioli goes to. <coughs> Jack Silvani, another one who's got pace, has got good goal sense. Um, and Silvani <coughs> has somehow turned himself into a semi-okay footballer at times. But Tiger fans out there, who would you be looking to put Dan Rioli on? Um, and how, how do we combat their, their speed in the front half? Because on paper you'd almost say they've got a bit more pace than us across a few lines. Doherty's another player who... Yeah, yeah. So Doherty pretty much sets everything up, doesn't he? 
Um, and honestly, football shit aside, full credit to him for getting back uh, and playing, by the way. Um, and Mitch McGovern, I think. So while Richmond have taken some risks with selections, the Blues have as well. Um, so I think McGovern was one that was probably on the border, but he's playing. And someone mentioned that Cripps had to go through a fitness test. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but that would be interesting to know if that was true. Yeah, Fisher's, I agree, Fisher is underrated. Um, I think he, he hasn't really ever looked out of place ever since he started playing. But. All right. Um, who, who's everyone tipping in chat for this game? What's everyone feeling? You can give margins. You don't have to tip the Tigers just because of me. I need to write down who the spinny wheel... Tigers by 420? Yeah, look, not going to lie, that'd be handy. You reckon the Blues might knock us off? I think it's going to be close. I think I said yesterday, us by 16. Um, but after seeing the seeming risks that we've taken, I'm almost a little bit gun-shy. Don't have a good feeling, says Min. Did anyone else laugh at the latitude, team of the week positions? No, what do they do there? Carlton by 20 for Grog. Ooh, I'm not sure I'd like that. But a real possibility. But what we've got here, we've got the spin wheel. So for each game of the round, we're going to spin the wheel to make our selection for the week. And I'm going to chuck all of these into a $1 multi. Gamble responsibly, all that kind of stuff. It's just a dollar, just a bit of a laugh. Um, but given that my tipping is probably not the greatest as it is, I figure I would let the wheel do the work. So for Richmond and Carlton, the wheel is going to be picking the Blues. Carlton for the first tip, you know, the winner. That's a good call, Grok. I didn't put, I haven't put a draw in. I will have to, um, I will do that next week. <clears throat> Chess going Richmond by 23. I dearly hope you're right. Yeah, if I do, if I do, so the way that one had worked, that was obviously two for each team. So if I chuck a draw in there as well, um, it should be a, a thin slither. So, or or maybe I do three of each team and then one draw to make it even thinner. It's probably the best way. All right, Carlton versus Collingwood on the Friday night. This should be a really, really good game, actually. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, McRae has done wonderful things with the Pies last year. As much as that pains Richmond supporters to say, um, you, you can't not... Who did I say? I said John, didn't I? Or did I say someone else? John versus Colin, anyway. Um, Carlton, did I? Oh, God, they're on my mind. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you can't help but respect what the Flybag has done, and Leper has done at Collingwood, um, which hurts. But it's funny because you're seeing a lot of Tiger fans actually start to warm to Collingwood because of the Richmond connection by extension. So just having a look at some of their stats from uh, the last practice game because they haven't got lineups announced yet. The scum. This is Tiggs. This is Tiggs. Tiggs membership. Um, <clears throat> what is going to be interesting for me is to see how Collingwood go without Brody Grundy. So he's obviously been one of the premier ruckmen for quite some time. They've obviously got McStay who's probably going to play bulk of his time up forward. But <coughs> yeah, Mason Cox can obviously do some ruck work, but I think I think Grundy was such a pivotal player for them for so long. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see how, how they cope without him. Um, it was kind of a weird situation how that all came about, wasn't it? Where he signed the extension and then not long after they're having to ship him off to free up cap space. Tommy Mitchell, big inclusion. The hate drive for Collingwood Footy Club isn't able to be worded. <laughs> Tom Mitchell is a massive inclusion. Um, now, controversial, <coughs> but I, I've personally never really viewed Mitchell as a damaging player. Even the year that he won the Brownlow. Yes, he gets a shitload of the ball, but 
Beckham, all the times I saw him play, and keep in mind, like Lawrence family, they're all Hawthorns, so I've, I've been to my fair share of Hawks games. There wasn't ever really times where you see him get the ball 40 times and think, oh, he, he is absolutely slayed a team. <clears throat> because he was all about like the sideways handballs and dishing it out. He just, I don't know. Like, I know you need people to get the footy, but I've just not ever viewed him to be super damaging. He does. He does get the ball. It is getting control of footy first. So I suppose that's something. Um, Dugowie. <clears throat> Dugowie is an interesting one for Collingwood. You almost feel like, in some senses, he's uh, not in his last chance. But how many chances is he getting? Like, we all know he's got the talent and the potential to be a superstar. <clears throat> I think for him, though, consistency has been what's let him down over the years. Would, would everyone take... <coughs> He's a threat, but it's whether he can execute what he has to do on a nightly basis. Would everyone take Dugowie in their side? Or would you be willing to give up something good to get him? Matthew Lloyd reckons to go with a top five player in the comp by the end of next year. That's a big call. I'm not sure he can string it together long enough. What would mean? What would you get if you were trading and you, had, and you were trying to get to go into your team? What would you trade? And that's the thing, Nick. Is full credit to the Pies for the games they won last year. Not taking that away from them for a second. But you look at how close a lot of them were, and they could have half of them could have quite easily gone the other way, and they fall out of the eight. And like we had a lot of close losses as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how they back up this year um, after last year. Like how much of it was a little bit of luck, how much like they weren't really dominant. They would they were still getting the job done, had a couple of close shaves. So it's going to be very very interesting. Yeah, they've built on a full line. That's right. But I mean, again, McRae and, and Co. Probably um, the right people at the helm to, to guide them. Um, now, as I said, their lineup's not out yet, so I can only really go off what they put out for the Pracky match against the Hawks. So this is obviously could change dramatically. Although there's still quite a few, I mean, a lot of their starters are there, really. Um, my check for me up forward is, I think he's an underrated footballer. Um, doesn't really, I don't think he gets the plaudits he probably deserves. I reckon he's just a really awkward matchup. He's got good height, good speed, good goal sense. Um, and he's always good for what feels like a, a goal or two a game at a minimum. And I think he would be, I think he's, he will benefit dr dramatically from McStay being there. And McStay is by no stretch a superstar player, no disrespect to him, but he's enough of a threat that he's going to take the key defender each week. And that's going to free up someone like Majacek to get, you know, the second best. Or that they might even go to Jamie Elliott. Um, so I, I think Majacek could sort of elevate again, again this year because he, yeah, I think he's just a super consistent player. He's probably actually one I, I would love to have had at the club. Um, I think he just plays that role really well. <coughs> probably, yeah, Cumberland type, yeah, exactly. Um, Taylor Adams is probably one of their, their key focal points and Jack Crisp, um, they kind of run the show. And Dacos, he's a superstar in the making. Well, both of them are. Um, the Collingwood have been very blessed and lucky to have the Dacoses join them for very little. So I expect Josh in particular to probably go to the, the next level. Um, side bottom, he is a thorn in our side from a personal level. Uh, always tears us apart, but... I mean, surely you would start to see some kind of transition phase between him and someone else on the wing. Uh, Bobby Hill's going to be, yeah, 100%. Some speed, and especially because Elliot's probably a little bit injury prone as well. You can't necessarily rely on him to play bulk of the game. So Bobby Hill adds a bit of speed as you set up front grot. What about our mate Oleg Markov? What's everyone thinking about him wearing the pies jumpers? Do, do we reckon Oleg will get a couple of games early on? I reckon he might be... He might be half a chance. Play him off the back line. Like, I know he had his flaws, but... 
I thought he was he wasn't too bad. Old Oleg. Uh, over to the cats again. They don't have their full team out yet, so this is just based on the practice game against Brizzy. I will do a tip after the Geelong piece, Crocodile. Um, the other Deconing. What's everyone's thoughts on Sam Deconing? I think he is going to develop very, very nicely and be a, a genuine defensive threat for years to come. Um, a pretty good head on his shoulders, I reckon. Uh, I won't talk about number 44 for obvious reasons, no, but like seriously, the Prestier incident aside, Tom Stewart is actually one of the backbones to their back line. Um, he, he is a sniper. Yeah, I, I really don't like him, but when he's playing clean, he's actually not, not a bad player. That's interesting. Radical at centre half back. I'm not sure that that's going to stick. Uh, Oliver Henry, I think they just got across. He was from Collingwood, wasn't he? So that's. Uh, Interesting to see how he goes. Tyson Stengel um, kicked a shitload of goals, didn't he? Yeah, that one hurts when you see, when you see someone like him bobbing up, uh, kicking goals again. But what's everyone's thoughts on Geelong? You know, reigning reigning premiers going into the season. Have they changed their list enough to go around again? Do, will the same thing work for them, or is Father Time going to catch up at some point? Do we think? Like Parfit, I don't think he'll play too many big midfield minutes. You wouldn't have thought. Like, does it feel like like their midfield? Guthrie, Dangerfield. I mean, you would. It feels like Dangerfield will probably play. He will spend a bit of time up forward as well, similar to what Tigers are doing with Dusty, I imagine. Hawkins will be underdone. Has he been injured? What's going to bring with Hawkins? Might get multiple kicks out in the full. So that's another one. So do they take the risk and play Hawkins in a round one game? Oh, it depends on how he's progressing with the injury, I suppose. But Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they go. So what's... Yes, Cameron on Baby Watch. Didn't he say, I don't know if this was misquoted, but something about that he would leave. Oh, I was about to say that. I mean, exactly that. So he did say that. He would leave at half time. Fair play. Fair play to him. I mean, that's a huge curveball. Something that you would, wouldn't would have really ever seen before, I don't think. But yeah, not, yeah. What's, we'll get a tip for this game. Geelong versus Collingwood. Who's everyone thinking? I think... I actually think the Pies might win. I don't know why. I just feel like the Pies might get up by about 15 to 20 points. Just because of... I suppose they had a little bit more preparation, not too much more. Um, if Hawkins is under a bit of a cloud, I think the, pie, I think the Pies are going to be hungry and um, raring to go. Who, who's everyone else tipping for this one? Geelong will thrash the cream pies. Hey, Chucky Mooks, yeah. What other tips we got for this one? Are we just doing an, AF an AFL chat show? Chucky, welcome. Geelong to win for Gronk. Oh, you can just join in the band and have a laugh if you want, Chucky. All right, spinning wheel for this game for pick number two of our nine-legged $1 multi. The spinning wheel has decided that Geelong will be the winners. So we've got Carlton and we've got Geelong. Seriously, if one of these multis ever get up, I know it's only a dollar a week, but my God, it would be, <coughs> it would be something extraordinary. Need to wash your mouth out with soap. I oh, know it hurts to say things like that. I get it. Here we go. It's hound time. This is this is your time to shine, hound. North Melbourne versus West Coast Eagles on the Saturday, 18th of March. Sign up sport. I always forget to do the tips. And hound, I am going to join your um, your fantasy comp. 
it's all I have to do on my work computer because I've got the. Oh no, I should be able to send the link to myself. Five hundred dollars, Jesus. But <laughs> that's pretty good. If you dip nine in the round, free palmy and pot. Jesus, that's not too bad from the sporting load. So fuck the games. <laughs> All right, Hound, this is your time, mate. North Melbourne. How are your mob going to fare this year? You got Clarko on board as coach. A little bit of controversy to start the year off. Um, how do you think he settled in? How much of an impact, Hound, do you think Clarko can have on your list in a year? Obviously, a phenomenal coach with what he did at the Hawks, uh, but he obviously had the list at his disposal as well for a large portion of that. Um, and without being disrespectful to North, their list isn't anywhere near what the Hawks were in their prime, obviously. But <clears throat> this is going to be a huge test of Clarko's raw coaching ability. Can he rebuild a club? Um, can he get them back up like he did to the Hawks? Uh, if anyone can do it, he can. If we're, you know, if we're being fair, I did. I did love the TikTok that North Melbourne posted when he was trying to do a bit of a good speech to the players in the meeting room, and he's gone with the Hawks comparison. He just ingrained in his head. It was very funny. Uh, watch a few videos. Yeah, and that's the thing, Nick. Is if you're a player at North Melbourne, you are going to hundred percent jump on the Clarkson bandwagon. You are going to eat up what he's saying and be fully invested because his credentials speak for themselves holding a lead yeah okay fair enough and that's the thing like you're still you're still a fairly young side <clears throat> so like you look at, and I was only a practice match but you look at the start you got off to against us in that practice game you were looking very very good moving the ball well you were limiting what we were doing um, but then it kind of fell away. So there might be some consistency issues for North Melbourne this year, but that's okay. As long as the kids are learning and having a crack, I think that's the, the two biggest things. Like I've always said, I don't mind losing games of football as long as the players you can see are clearly having a dip the whole time. You can cop that on the chin thing. Head to head. Yeah, so that's right. It's the second half that's going to be interesting. No Wardlaw, Tucker, Coleman, Jones, oh, and Zerha a test. Zerha will jump in as possible. Is, does Coleman Jones have a spot on your side, like a genuine best 22 spot hound? No Ben McKay. Uh, so we've got Zebul. So McKay, so again, this is from the previous practice game, so if McKay's not in there, that sort of puts a bit of a hole in your defensive lineup. Good playing as Who would you play, hound? The player that really captured my attention that I think is going to be a star is Harry Sheasel. Surely he is playing round one. Surely. Hey, Des Blues, welcome. Uh, yes, I do have a fantasy one. I th I don't know if it's full or not, though. <clears throat> um, if you go into the Discord, there's a fantasy section. I'll type that here. Uh, there's a fantasy, fantasy section. Click on the link and see if you can join. If my one is full, go to the Hound, who's also in chat. His Discord, he might have some space in his one too. So I think mine had 16 spots, but I can't remember how many filled up. But welcome. Cheezle's playing. Awesome. They announced it. Oh, he, he was super impressive. He did not look out of place at all. And um, I think he's going to become a favourite player for a lot of opposition supporters. Uh, Hound, Liam Shields, I thought was an interesting pickup. Clearly got the Clarko connection, which played a massive role in getting him across. I think a smart pickup from a experienced head and leadership perspective, um, that's probably what you're going to be getting out of him. I don't know whether you would expect some elite level gameplay from Shields like his prime at the Hawks, but I think... I think that's a good a good pickup. I agree, Dustblue. Agree, and I've only seen a couple of games of his, and he's gonna, he is something else. He's got all the tricks, goal sense. Um, he's a very very good young kid. I wonder what I wonder what odds he's paying for the Rising Star, and who else is going to compete with him? Curtis Simpkin. Uh, Cunnington's the other one. I think a huge shout out to Ben Cunnington. 
um, with what he's been through on a personal level to get back and be playing elite level football is nothing short of extraordinary. Um, it's it's such a good story to hear him out there playing. Oh, I think the AFL will did. I think uh, and he, yeah, ridiculous what he went through. Um, so full props to him for getting out there. But he has an impact. Like he's not just a token player. Ah, uh, good call, Blues Ashcroft. How about Brisbane getting him for free? My goodness. I know everyone can get their own fair share of the father-son picks, but... Jeez. Take the doggy's laugh off the screen. It's looking scary. Yeah, we'll go get to them. Uh, Jaden Stevenson, the other one. Who, um... I think he needs to have a big year for you, Hound. Jaden Stevenson. He's one of those guys that he shows a lot in glimpses, but can kind of go missing. Like, he had that one really good play against us in that practice match where he just sort of slides through the middle. That's where he does his his best work. But if he if he doesn't pull his head in, I think he... I don't know if he'll be on the chopping block, but someone could go past him, I think. Uh, heading over to the Eagles. So I think I saw before, is Nick Nat in doubt? Is that what you said, Grok? Because that's, that's a huge game changer. Yeah, and I saw Yo was out. Rothman and Nat Nui. Jesus. Uh, I reckon Dacos... Um, I reckon it might be a two-year thing for Dacos. The way that I kind of think the Brownlow works... Well, well, this is just speculation. But it's almost like you've got to have one semi-good year where you're kind of polling a heap of votes but don't win it. And then you're kind of in the umpire's eyesight. And then you probably win it in the next coming years. I think, undoubtedly he will get close to winning one because he is a gun player. Um, but you still got people like Cripps running around who are, are good. Um, a few other players that will contend. But Dacos... Yeah, Miller, Miller was actually very close, wasn't he, last year? So the Eagles... Or oh, Darling might be out too. So we can't drop any any footies on the goal line. Hasn't he had some... like? Has he had some of the worst grand final moments in history? Shocking. Darling under from ankle injury. And this is the thing, guys. Round one, teams are prepared to take punts on people to try and get on the, on the board early. And it can backfire because they come out with further injuries. Um, yeah, it backfires. But Tim Kelly running the show on the guts. So he was underwhelming a little bit the last... Not maybe not last year, but the year before. So he needs to uh, to bounce back. Oscar Allen is their great big hope up forward. Especially if... Darling's not playing. That makes things very interesting. Josh Kenny seems that he should win. You have to punch someone. Yeah, he hasn't been the same, has he? Liam Ryan. Uh, and Petricelli, he's one that probably went in and out of their side a bit last year. I actually quite like him. I was really impressed with his hunt and his speed, especially as a small forward. I suppose because I've watched so many of the Tigers games um, that we're used to seeing that forward pressure and everyone's doing it now it's not just one team doing it but I thought Petricelli was quite good at that yeah I think he yeah he, he was super quick so I'm, I'm not sure why he fell out of favour there last year so I'm not sure if, if there was something at play there I agree Blues Tim Kelly was very good at Geelong and you can understand why West Coast did the trade that they did um, but I think he kind of lost his way a bit for one or two of those years and it really wasn't the trade wasn't living up to the hype and it sort of felt like Shalong had won on some level. Uh, Dom Sheed, the grand final hero. Um, I mean, what a moment. What a moment. But yeah, West Coast, where they finished last year was it second last, third last. So it's going to be interesting to see how they go. This, to me, is uh, the Kangaroos and West Coast is a genuine 50 50, I reckon. Um, where is it? It's at, is that Marvel? Yeah, at Marvel. I reckon you're a chance hound. What's everyone's tip for the North Melbourne West Coast game, including margin? Who do we think's going to win? Well, it's just going to be a... <laughs> their midfield now. Yeah, midfield is horrid. Yeah, agree blues. Matty Rao. I was devastated for him when he injured himself in his debut year. I mean, based on the limited amount that we saw, you would have thought he would have shit in the Rising Star Award. Uh, North vs Eagles. I'm, I'm thinking North Melbourne might win this by 15 points. 
pound north by 19 or they're going to smash us or we're going to smash them nothing in between any other tips for this one before we get to the wheel Eagles by 15 for Grok. I agree, Blues. Footy is a confidence game, isn't it? If you don't have confidence, you're behind the eight ball. You're in all sorts. All right, we're going to spin the wheel for our third pick of our nine-legged $1 multi. The wheel, north by 11 for the Blues. The wheel believes that West Coast, wait for that to stop because it's getting awfully close, that West Coast will win. Sorry, Hound. The wheel doesn't lie. No, it probably does. Okay, Port Adelaide versus Brisbane. What's all this, um, we'll see about the wheel. What's all this prison bar who ha shit again? Is, is Eddie Maguire really making a deal out of this again? I, I thought we were, I thought we were a bit past this now. But, uh, Port Adelaide. Interesting club, Forrester. I'm not sure if you're still around, mate. You're all the resident Port supporter here. What are your thoughts on the uh, Port Adelaide power? And is Ken Hinckley's job on the line yet? That seems to be the, the common thread with... Did he get accepted blues? Right. So, to wear this week or to wear at other points during the season? It, that's interesting. Maybe, I wonder if Port Adelaide have gone a bit harder at being able to wear it since Eddie's no longer president. Oh, okay, for the showdown. Right, okay. I like the prison bar jumper. I think Eddie's just done a bit of a high horse thing. Uh, Port Adelaide, for me, they would be a... I, I feel I can relate to them in some sense. I feel like they're a frustrating team to support, I reckon, because... They inevitably drop games they shouldn't and win games they're probably thinking, how do we do that? But uh, the COVID year was at 2020. They honestly botched their biggest chance to play and probably win a grand final. Um, with the amount of home ground kind of stuff they had, they completely dropped the ball there. I oh, support the Power Blues. Do you reckon you dropped the ball in that COVID year? I, I thought you had the list, but... The Tigers beating you in that, yeah, shouldn't have happened. What's your thoughts on the power this year then? How do you think they're going to track any major changes? Um, the one recruit that you guys had in recent times I was very jealous of was Aaliyah Aaliyah. I thought he, his intercept marking game, um, for me, was is elite. And something that doesn't grow on trees, his ability to read it. So... I like I like that he's still playing, still around. Uh, Darcy Byrne Jones, all Australian. I that still that still triggers me. Not going to lie, but it's the Port Young kids that I think get their fans excited and, and are going to take them to the next level if they can all get it to click. Connor Rosie, Zach Butters, um, even George Artis. I think, especially Butters and Rosie, they are the poster boys for Port Adelaide. Um, absolute gun players. Played decent last year. Yeah, and that's it. The first, the first like, six, seven matches, if you drop those or most of those, it can be very hard to claw your way back in. But what do you reckon of the Horn Francis trade there, then, Blues? Are you happy with what you gave up? Are you happy with what you're seeing of him so far? Finlayson underdone, you reckon, Grok? Oh, and he started running last month after Sinismosis. Hasn't that popped up a lot now? Sinusmosis. Oh, God. Ollie Wines. Big head, but yeah, he's just a ball winning magnet. Uh, Todd Marshall's the other one I really like. I think he's been a little bit underrated. Underrated in some sense, but he's still developing and, and growing into his game, I think. But uh, I think he's, he's going to be a, a bit of a weapon up forward for power. If Dixon can uh, play his role as well. And the Brisbane Lions, well, I mean, she's if they if they can't <clears throat> they can't make a final uh, well, they can't make the grand final this year, then they should almost pack it in. So there some of their recruiting has been extraordinary. Dunkley, adding Dunkley, you've got Gunston, um, 
I mean, just those two alone. I only got Ashcroft, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, Ashcroft, Gunston, Dunkley is an extraordinary addition to their team. My only thing is, I'm not sure if they're mentally strong enough to do it. And I don't know... I don't know if that's a Chris Fagan thing or not. I just feel that <clears throat> the list they've had, and similar to Port Adelaide in the COVID year, they were, Brisbane were honestly in prime position to win a flag. And they they botched it. And it was almost handed to them on a, on a silver platter. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just not sure if they're mentally capable of pushing through and winning the flag. I reckon there's just a few demons in some of those players. Like Harris Andrews, I don't think he had that great of a year last year from the games I saw. Um, from what I saw, there's a lot of arguing with teammates and things like that. Charlie Cameron can be hot and cold, but then maybe they all go to another level when you've got Dunkley, Ashcroft and Gunston there. So who knows? No Zorko or Gardner though, yeah, true. Um, I think Gunston's a great pickup. Huber Cluggage, he's one of the best ones going around, I think. Uh, so clean, whether it's inside, outside. Um, he is a, a very dangerous player. Lockie Neal, I mean, what a midfield line. Dunkley, Neal, I mean, Zorko when he's there. That's a that's a pretty good a pretty good set in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you for the follow, dude. Um, Lincoln McCarthy. He's almost underrated as well. There are a lot of plays that I just thoroughly enjoy watching. But, um, yeah, they you would have to say that they are the hot tip for the grand final this year. As but the pressure could get to him. The pressure would get to him. All right, thank you again, Bood. Much appreciated. Are you the same Bood from TikTok? Out of interest? All right, who's going to win out of the Lions and Port Adelaide? I might try and speed through the last ones. I've just realized how long I've been talking for. Brisbane Lions versus Port. What's everyone's tips and margins? I reckon the Lions will get up by 25. Whoa, 60. Jesus. Wait, where's it at? Oh, it's in Adelaide, though. Six, that's a huge call, bro. All right, who else has everyone got? Brisbane by 69, Hound. Well done. What are you thinking, Blues? Are, the, are your boys going to get up? And just quietly, there's no there's no disgrace in tipping against your team as well. I feel that's a noble thing to do if you really believe it. Many times I've tipped against Richmond. Ah, uh, good to hear from you, Boot. Good to hear from you. Absolutely. Um thoroughly agree and I've said to a few people like I've watched all your TikToks as well with AFL uh, 23 and things like that um, and the way I see it if we can I'm sure there's other people who do it but for whatever reason it's just shows that I keep seeing as well as what I've done but if we can get the message out to as many as possible to get behind the game and buy it and support it and sort of pump it up a bit I think the better because it's got some serious potential uh, and I think it's in good hands and I think you think that too so um, it, was, it was good to see that there's, you know, other people out there who are trying to get behind it and pump it up. It's good. Ah, oh, chances is back. Ah, yes, fingers crossed, bro. It's going to be a good game. I'm pumped for AFL 23. Very pumped for it. All right, so Brisbane and Port. The wheel to add to our nine-legged $1 multi. Oh, it has ticked over to Brisbane, thank God. I was a little bit concerned there that we were going to be stuck. Alright. Oh, very lucky. That was that was line ball. I was a little bit nervous. I might have done a cheeky re-spin there. No, I would have done that. Go with the wheel. Um, oh, the ultimate team from the Blues. I, I'm with Boot on this. I'm holding out hopes for it. Because... They've got to do something big. Um, and it just, it was funny to see people hanging their hat on the information that was on EB and JB and things like that. It is, they could not have possibly released a game with just those features on it. So yeah, the the 22nd launch will be good. I'm super pumped that I'm able to get along to it. So I'll be throwing up content left, right, center because we are allowed to share it straight away, which is cool. Um, and I dare say, if there's an ultimate team type thing in there, I dare say that's going to be the centerpiece. Um, 
it's yeah they've got to do something big so i'll be very very keen to see how that all goes all right melbourne versus the bulldogs now i know we did say before the doggies do have a pretty good team on paper we'll try and get through this a bit quicker but um let me get to melbourne first melbourne 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 oh yes the one they touched us up as mentioned, these are just the lineups from their last practice game uh, because their sides aren't out yet. But geez, they looked good. I got along to Casey Fields to watch this game. Um, and whether it was a combination of us not going full tilt or what it might be, but it honestly felt like they had five extra players on the ground at any given time. Their, their ball movement from the back line was really, really good. Um, as, much as, as much shit as I give Jake Lever for guarding grass, he and Stephen May were working together very well. They effectively shut out our Fords and our stupid blast kick. So basically the message is to anyone who's playing against Melbourne, if you opt to blast kick into your forward line as your method of trying to score, you're probably not going to win the game. Um, it's as simple as that. And I, I don't think we were trying too hard. Grok, I do take that into consideration, but shit, Melbourne looked good. Clayton Oliver, gun, Petraka, gun, uh, also the face of the AFL 23 campaign from the AFL. Max Gorn, the, the big, the scariest prospect I think for clubs is going to be Max Gorn and Brady Grundy working in tandem. Uh, I think that is that is dangerous. Um, we had Choco Williams come out to our workplace not long ago, and he he's done a lot of work with Gorn on goal kicking. Um, and I don't know whether he was joking or not, but he, I think he was. But he said that he reckons because Grundy's in the side and ha how that might look, he's like, Gorn could actually feature higher towards the top end of the Coleman medal, was what he was thinking with his improved goal kicking and whatnot. So, interesting to see how they go. But they, um, I'm a Richmond supporter. Boot, what about yourself, mate? Oh, that shit, you can't make it. That would have been awesome to catch up and actually just sit there with you and go through it all together. That would have been good. Damn. But out of the Ds, I think the Ds are going to be right up there again. And anyone who thinks elsewise, I think is going to be a little bit disappointed. Let over to the Doggies. The Doggies have been our nemesis for quite some year. They always seem to, to knock us off. Yeah, Gorn is a great mark, and that's the thing. He is a good mark, and he just has to kind of just polish his goal kicking a bit. It's not the most fluent or nicest looking style, as long as it goes with the big sticks. And you look at the game against us, <clears throat> he kicked a few a few goals, and you got Grundy there. Like, you're not going to play Gorn on the bench when Grundy's rucking, are you? So he's going to drift forward, and I think he's going to be a huge danger, and he's, they're going to seriously stretch people's defences. Um, and the player who's going to, again, benefit from this is Fritch, <coughs> who's already a gun player in his own right. Um, but he, he is going to take advantage of this 100%. So he's going to be super dangerous. S is unfortunately, have a soft spot for the Tigers. How do you reckon you'll go this year, the Dons? I reckon you're a good chance to win your first four or five. The only thing you don't want that to do is you don't want it to give false hope. But on paper, I mean, we'll get to your game soon. But um, you should definitely, you should definitely smack Hawthorne. I would have thought uh, the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, I reckon, maybe bat the deepest in the midfield area. Would that be? Would anyone else agree with that? Maybe, I don't know whether they would bat the deepest, but they would be right up there as one of the deepest. I would have thought. <laughs> going to be a long year. You've got to give Scott a couple of years, I suppose, don't you, to implement what he wants to do for Essendon. There you go, Brett Scott. You'll be right. Yeah, Hunter and Dunkley is a is a big loss. Still got Libba. Still got Bailey Smith. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, Bailey Dale, Bonson Pally, McRae, Trelaw. Um... Bailey Booms, Caleb Daniel can go through there. They still, they still have quite a bit of depth there, and good depth. They're not just they're not just role players. They're all like pretty good players. 
Aaron Norton, uh, who we made look like Wayne Carey one night. He's yeah, he, he's very good as well. Sam Darcy is the interesting one. We obviously saw them play him at both ends of the ground last year. Where does everyone think Sam Darcy is going to be the most dangerous for, for the Bulldogs? As a backman or a forward? I mean, if he's playing forward, I don't know. Hugo Hagen's got to obviously get a game as well. Josh Bruce could be the one that falls out of favour here, possibly. We make him look like Kerry every game. I know, I know. But yeah, I think Sam Darcy, he looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure I've got him in my fantasy team as well. You reckon as a defender, Blues? Yeah. He just reads it well. He just looked very comfortable out there, didn't he? So I think they've got, I think they've got a good one there. All right, let's get a tip for the game. Melbourne versus the Western Bulldogs, Saturday, 18th of March at the MCG. Who do we think is going to win? <coughs> and by how much? I reckon, I guess it's probably a little bit closer than people think. I reckon the Ds, though, just with their class um, and with the gone Grundy combination, I reckon they'll get up by about 18 points. Melbourne by five for the Blues. Melbourne by 35 for Grok. Oof. Yeah, Hound, if you've got your link handy for your fantasy thing, chuck it in the chat. So if anyone, if anyone's looking to join an AFL fantasy league, um, join the Hounds one. He'll drop a link in there. He's still got spots. Gone after the siren? Jeez, wouldn't that be filthy? Uh, where's my wheel? All right, Melbourne vs. Bulldogs. For the next leg of the nine-legged $1 multi, the wheel says... Agree, boo. The demons are going to be bloody tough to beat. Ah, oh, the bulldog shit. That's not good. Damn, you will. They just look so good all over the ground, boot. It's crazy. And like, we haven't. I didn't even really mention Ben Brown, and that's not in a disrespectful way, but I don't think he set the world on fire previous years. But he hasn't had to. He's not even the one doing the damage, and I don't think he will be going forward either. Um, but yeah, Fritch is going to have a field day. Cosy Pickett's going to, like, at the feet of bloody Gorn or Grundy and everyone else down forward. Yeah, crazy. The inflatable balloon, Ben Brown. <laughs> Picked up. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. At least you can talk footy with him now. That's what you want. Imagine going to work and not being able to talk footy. That's Rob. Very fortunate working at uh, Sharon that that's all we essentially do. Uh, Gold Coast versus Sydney. Now, I did see, I think it was the Blues you put in here before about the Suns finishing top eight. I said that as well today. I'm I'm kind of with you on that, but the I suppose the question mark then ends up being on who falls out, which is actually probably harder to answer. Um, but I think Stewie Jew has started to do a really, really good job with uh with the suns the wacky inflatable seriously it's all i can think of hang on i've got to find it now uh what do i want to call it yeah this guy hey yeah ben brown <laughs> so gold, gold coast I think they're in for a good year. I agree with what you said earlier, Blues. Um, ben King, obviously a huge player. Marbia Troll was the one for me last year. And I know that might sound semi-biased because I probably follow him a little bit closer being a former Tiger. But he looked really good. There was plenty of times during the season uh, that I wish we had him back when we had various injuries. But I think they've just got... I don't know, they've got a little bit of spark about it. I don't mind. Oh, the hounds. Oh, cheers, hound. Thank you very much, mate. Fight gift to thank you. You're an absolute legend, hound. Make sure you drop your AFL Fantasy link in as well. Drop it in there. We'll get everyone to, to fill your spots. Yeah, Troll. Yeah. So I thank you again, hound. You're an absolute legend. Um, Trolly, oh, I'm loving his work up there. Lacocious. I'm. S I don't know if this is going to stay true or not. The half forward line. But I'm glad to see him there. I thought he was a complete waste down back. I understood why Dex! why they were all there, Dex from the hand. I understand why they wanted to put like coaches down there for his skill. Like he was a good user of the ball out of the back line. But he looks so much better out forward. 
Uh, Matt Rowell, as you mentioned as well earlier, Blues. Everyone wants him to get a full run at it. Oh, from Min. Oh, Min of the dicks. Well done, Min. Uh, Matty Rowell, absolute superstar. Um, yeah, he, he can cause some serious damage if we're talking like Brownlow and things like that, if he can get a consistent year at it. Um, and can I just say, Jared Witts, for me, one of the most underrated ruckmen in the comp. I think the work he's done at the Gold Coast has been exceptional. <clears throat> With all the young kids he's got around him. Oh, hounds. On fire. You're an absolute gentleman, hound. Thank you very much, mate. Very, very much appreciated. Your love and support. You're an absolute superstar. Thank you. Now I want the kangaroos to win now. Look what you made me do. If Holland's Rail, Bitterick and Ainsa stay fit, yeah, they'll be alright. They'll be alright. Yeah, Jared Witts. No, you're all the awesome bloke, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure to have met you across the various platforms. You are a superstar. And I look forward to setting this up where we can do a um, a guest star thingy me jiggy and do one together. Get a room. Hey, I'll, I'll get a room with the hand. Don't worry about that. Sydney Swans, runners up last year. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how, it, how they bounce back. Yeah, this one he's bounced back. Um, I can show my fantasy. Can do that. Lance Franklin. Is he... Is he past it? That sounds a little bit harsh, potentially, but... I know he's on that big, long contract, but... Um, I suppose the question mark over Franklin is, but can he stay on the field long enough? And I suppose it comes down to... Is, an, is a 70% fit Franklin going to be better than whatever their next op op opportunity option is? Graham's buddies last year. Yeah, it's... I wouldn't be surprised if he was play-managed a bit. Maybe missed a few games here and there. Uh, Isaac Heaney, I think, is a superstar. Um, Errol. Has he still got the mullet? Has he got... Errol Gould, has he still got his mullet or has he got rid of that? I hope he's kept it. The, the story for me, though, has been... McCartan for them, Paddy McCartan. Yeah, you know, you got a gift him on Trocky. The hound's been on fire, an absolute legend. <clears throat> he'll still take a defender. Yeah, that's true, Grock. He'll, he'll definitely draw the best defender. Absolutely, he will. You reckon Gordon top five for Brownlow Blues? Interesting, that's a bit good call. What about um, Paddy McCartan? And thank you, Chess, for posting that. If anyone wants to join footy tipping, join the hound's comp. Some good prizes on the line. And his fantasy as well. Uh, Paddy McCartan for me is the big story. Oh, Hound with the biddies. Jesus Christ, Hound. You are on fire tonight, mate. You don't have to do this. You're a legend. And you know I love you. That Yeah, you are a superstar. Thank you, mate. Number one, baby. Straight to the top. Ah, oh, thank you. You've caught me off guard there. Um... Paddy McCartan, to me, is the big story for the Swans. They took a massive punt on him, obviously, from the Saints with all the whole concussion issue, but he's looked really good down back. I think that's his spot. The uh, the ball coming towards him seems to be suiting him a lot better. But I, I think I think Sydney are going to be up there again in some capacity. Yeah, I agree, Chez. Spend the money on yourself. You've got you to save your money for the prime you're going to buy because they're going to fleece us. I went to Safeway as well. Couldn't find any. Got robbed. All right, who's winning out of the Suns and the Swans, folks? Who have we got? I think. Well, oh, we're. I keep getting the check. So it's in the Gold Coast. The Suns. The Suns typically get off to a flyer, don't they? Oh, delay to the twentieth. No wonder I couldn't find it. Jesus. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if the Suns snuck a cheeky win here. I'm going to say the Suns by eight points. I just think um, they're they're young, they're firing, they're hungry, and they've traditionally got off to reasonably good starts. Oh, the Hound! My goodness, save your money for your prime and AFL, mate. I love you. Jesus, you are a great man. You won't be able to buy AFL 23 at this rate. I wonder what they're going to retail it for. Have we heard that yet, Booed? Oh, Hound's got the badge. 
absolutely slaying it tonight mate you are, thank you so much you don't have to you, but i really really appreciate it jb79 that's pretty good all right for the next leg of the nine legged one dollar multi the wheel has decided sydney swans i'm comfortable with that even though i just tipped gold coast i am comfortable with that. i will make a discord section um and put this dollar multi in there we can track it see how it goes it'll probably fall flat in its face the first leg well i kind of hope it does because it's said that carlton's going to win and i also don't want that gws versus adelaide this is a, a genuine 50 50 game um the giants with the new coach at the helm i'm i'm glad for them they did that because i really didn't believe that they could go any further with leon cameron um, i thought that he had gotten them as far as they could go there was just i don't know it just always felt like that they would play for portions as a as a unit as a team and they would shit on teams but then they would all fall back into individual selfish roles and it would cost them games i don't know whether that's a player thing or a coach thing not being able to extract that or form that bond but he just didn't seem like the right person for the job after probably missing a good chance to win a flag really um yeah, I'm surprised he lasted that long too. I thought it maybe went on a year or two too long. Uh, what's everyone's thoughts on GWS naming Toby Green as captain? Oh, the hound again. Thank you. I think I think Green as captain is a very bold call. Um, just because of the type of player he is. He's, he's arguably their most talented player on the list. I don't know much about his leadership abilities though. Uh, yeah, oh, I don't know whether it's a farce. I think it's a... Maybe it's a subtle ploy to keep him in check on the field. Maybe it's a bit of a, a mind game from the coaching staff. He has, Sarge, uh, you're right, he has cost the club money um, and himself suspensions and his team games by not being there. But he is unquestionably probably their most talented player. And he must be showing some type of good leadership qualities to be put up as captain. So... I'll, Okay, if the players voted, then, you know, they know best, I suppose, in terms of the leadership stuff. You should see how it pans out. Uh, Tom Green, absolute gun. I hope that we can somehow pry him from them in a few years, but I, I doubt it. I think he'll be on a, a godfather deal. Um, they've still got good players, though, don't they? Like, I know they've lost and they've shared a lot of plays. They obviously lost Taranto and Hopper to us. Um, they've lost two of us, they lose. Lost a few over the years, but... They still got Coniglio, Josh Kelly, Tom Green, Lockie Whitfield, um, all really good solid household names that just get the job done week in, week out. Um, Jesse Hogan at Ford, not sold. I know he did good for you, Min, on the, the simulation game, but just not sure how much impact he'll have as a Ford. I lost Bobby Hill as well. There we go, Bobby Hill. Yeah, Hogan good for a few darts at a festival. Like, there's some serious losses, so it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust. Uh, are they playing in Adelaide? The Crows. I wonder if the Crows are still listening to the Richmond theme song on the bus. What a what a disaster that was. Riccardi's the one who tears me apart, Adelaide Football Club. I don't, I don't blame Ches Hound. I think you were very extraordinarily generous, but you, you could have kept it for yourself. You're, you're a superstar, but make sure you keep some for your prime in your AFL 23. <clears throat> no, much appreciated. A good call on if we did a tournament as well for AFL 23. We can definitely whip something up for that. Uh, the Crows, there's been a few people at my work say that they think the Crows are going to be the bolter for this year, who might jump up into the eight. I'm a little bit sceptical on it, to be fair, but... What's everyone else think? What's everyone's vibes on Adelaide's year? How do you think they're going to go? Uh, I'm pretty sure we play Sydney in that round, Nick. I can double check. And they've got um, Rochelle. He's obviously very good. What I found most interesting with Adelaide over the last year and a bit is that they've opted to hold on to Taylor Walker and it was almost at the expense of Fogarty. I think from what I heard, he was very, very close to leaving. And I know we were one of them who had spoken to him. Um, 
I, I don't necessarily know if Fogarty will end up being a better player than Walker. Pro probably not. But Fogarty, I think, is a very good lead-up forward and I think demands that number one role and they kind of get in each other's way. So if they can work that out, it might actually work for them. Yeah, Phil Thorpe as well. Yeah, that's right. They've got the bones to, to form a good forward line. Riley O'Brien's a very good ruck. Um, I think there was some bad news about Matt Crouch. I think someone mentioned in Discord that he had injured himself badly, so that's not good if that's confirmed. Pedley, you reckon, would be a good grok? Keep an eye for him. Doty, another good one. Brody Smith, coming, obviously he's had the knee injury previously, but... And they might be a better team than they were last year with the top teams that were good get better. That's it, dude. And that's the thing. Like, they might bolt up from their existing position. Um, but as we sort of said earlier, the, the hardest question to actually answer is who's going to fall out of the eight. Like, there's nothing that really stands out, obviously. Like, whoever falls out of the eight, it's going to be a surprise. Um, yeah, I don't know who's, who's going to miss out there. All right, Giants versus Adelaide. Who's going to win that one? At GWS Stadium on Sunday who's everyone got there I reckon I reckon the Giants will get up <coughs> maybe by 20 points <coughs> pardon me the beans with the golf I'm going to be pretty much consuming the entire packet in one night the way I play Giants by 26 for Grok Adelaide by 35 for Blues anyone else got any tips for this one Okay, for the next leg of the nine-legged multi, the wheel says Adelaide by 10 for the hounds. Or oh, the giants from the wheel. That's not bad. We'll take that. We'll take the giants. All right. Only, I think it's two games, a couple of games left. Oh, okay, yeah, boot your mob. Hawks versus Essendon. Oh, Hydra, thank you. When a Australian football coach online season start a league. Well, I was thinking of making a Pink Panda team and putting everyone in it and just running a season. Still might do it. Still might do it. Okay, Hawks first Essendon. Boo, this is your time to shine. What are your vibes on the on Essendon for the year? Surely you get off to a good start in this particular game. Um, Hawthorne, I think, will be in the bottom four again. Um, not to say they won't back the Hawks they'll surprise a lot of people well they're missing their problem is they're missing a couple of fours obviously they've lost Gunston Kaczynski apparently is I don't know if he's coming off injury who's the other big dude they got down there uh, Mitch Cox is it whoever the other big guy is he's out injured um, I suppose if I click on their team it'll probably tell me actually won't it lineups so Kaziski's playing there's someone else who's missing Lewis Mitch Lewis thank you Mitch Cox that's someone I played foot, coach foot, football against see I think they're going to struggle a little bit down forward this week in particular uh, I just Kaziski being their only forward of big note um, might be what undoes them so that's where you're probably going to have to look to get on top of them there Bood Yes, the yeah, there's heaps of night days of yeah, recovery. Uh, yeah, but the, the Hawks list just doesn't scream, oh my god, we're going to win eight or nine games. I don't know. Sicily, I'm a big fan of Sicily. I think you can do some dumb shit on the field, but I can see why there'd be temptation to even maybe play him forward as well um, if they're a couple short down there, but then they're going to severely weaken their defense if they do that. <clears throat> Bruce is sort of getting on in age still still finds the goals though I think they're one of their biggest highlights is Dry Newcomb though uh, what a pick up he was beginning from the mid-season draft um, he's he was just built to play football uh, he's got zero shits given just crashes in gets the job done um, I think he's been a super pick up for them Warple it's just their midfield outside of Newcomb isn't really awe-inspiring at all, so and I, and I think that's where you Essendon will actually get on top of him for this game. The Hound with some trade news: Ben McKay wants to play for Carlton next year, possibly. I mean, you don't want that, do you? Where have you heard that? 
Uh, yes, is it now? Granted, three goals, 14 in a practice game doesn't fill you with a lot of confidence, boot, I can imagine, but I still think you've got the cattle on the park to knock off the Hawks. What are your thoughts, boot, on Merritt being named as your new captain? Were you happy with Heppel for his stints? Do you think he should have gone on, or, or do you think that the change was right? Um, Sam Draper is one of my favourites to watch. He, he does things that Ruckman shouldn't even contemplate doing. The amount of times you see him pick the ball up and like actually sprint through packs or take on the smaller guys, it's hilarious to watch because it looks so wrong. But I love the fact that he backs himself to do that kind of shit. Um, I think he's a great character. He's good for the game, and I, I enjoy watching him. Uh, Tipper Woody, the return of, the, of Tipper. What's everyone's thoughts on that? So it was interesting with how I will be streaming some of AFL Coach. I was going to do that tonight as well, but I didn't anticipate talking this long. But I will be doing it. I've got to actually set it up and test it first. But yeah, Tiff and Woody back is interesting at Ford. Peter Wright, I thought, showed some really good signs the last couple of years. Um, I always find it staggering that he almost refuses to play in the ruck, given how tall he is, but... His accuracy last year, he was supremely accurate. Um, so that's all you can ask for. Like, essentially, if you're a defender and you're one out with Peter Wright or he's on the lead, he's either marking it or you're giving away a free kick for chopping the arms. Um, so it's almost like a, a team defense kind of needs to happen to stop Peter Wright. Orwin Davy Jr., I think, will be exciting. Nick Martin, very, very good player. Uh, and Andrew McGrath, um, I think he'll spend more time on the wing or on the ball. Than, uh, than half back to be fair uh, Bood says change was probably due if he is back you would have thought McGrath or Parrish I, I thought McGrath was to be honest unsure what's happened within the club but it seems to have dropped off the radar a bit in a sense of leadership Merritt's the next best option I think from what from the small amount of media stuff he's done so far I think he's spoken really well and come across really well as captain I know that doesn't really mean a lot it's on field stuff but even if we want to talk about on-field actions, I think Merritt's footballing does speak for itself. He finds the ball, um, good user of it, and he leads by example. So I, I think he's the right choice, but I do think McGrath, I thought he was uh, half a chance as well. And how lucky were you guys to get Massimo D'Ambrasio from us, from the EFL team? What a story he was. You reckon you get Tipper will get injured early and retire? I, I hope not, to please. I, I'm, I like Tipper. I think he's good for the game. Electrifying, good goal sense. Gets the crowd fired up. Gets the forwards fired up. All right, he'll be tipping for the Hawks and Essendon. I think Essendon are going to shit this in. I think Essendon will win by. He was a steal. Absolute steal. I was shattered when he went because I thought that we might have elevated him, but uh, he got in first, so good on Essendon. Uh, for me, Essendon will win this by about 35 points, I think. <clears throat> I just think it's it's imperative that Essendon get off to a good start to the year and just line by line on the ground, I'm pretty, I just feel like you've got them covered pretty easily. But we'll see, see how that pans out. So, for the second last leg of the nine-legged multi, the wheel, please, for the love of God. Oh, shit. Has gone Hawthorne. Oh, well. If the multi was in any, not in any doubt, I think it's just about out of, out of the question now. But, um... Yeah I, yeah, I think you'll get the job done, Boot. I don't think you've got to stress. Trust the wheel. I'm not sure I can trust it on that one. Stra uh, stra I know, Stranger Things. This is the thing, like, round one is so hard. Um, You just never know. Like, these practice games, they all... Are, I know it's the only thing we can go off as a guide. I get it. But they essentially mean nothing because teams are trying stuff. They're not playing at 100%. Like, you just don't know. So, we'll see. We'll see. Last game for the round, St Kilda vs Freeman or the Ross Line Cup. How would you be re-signing back up for your old club to play against the club that you left them for in really awkward circumstances? You couldn't script that kind of shit. Um, 
Did anyone, I haven't heard it, but did anyone actually hear the audio that got leaked from Ross Lyon in the coach's box? I, and to be fair, it, I don't, if it was harsh on a player, whatever it might be, I don't think there's anything in that. If you were to put a microphone in every coach's box, you'd hear the same thing. Like, they're grown men playing elite sport. I'm kind of glad nothing more really came of it, from what I could tell. But, <coughs> yeah, he's an interesting character, Ross Lyon. How does everyone think the Saints will go under him? Oh, I'm on a redundant secure. That's a win. To show secure. Um, unless Ross Lyon has changed his coaching philosophy, I can't see them. I can't see them featuring in the finals. Yeah, they'll be defensive. Show this video. All right, I'll trust you. Oh, I can't. It's on, I'm not on my... Oh, hang on. I'll click on it. What have you sent us? Secure defense enjoying their last few days of happiness before the season starts. So that's pretty much them. Oh, I need sound. All right, I'll have to. I'll pop it on the sound after. Be yeah, the Saints, unless unless Ross Lyon changes his coaching philosophy, I don't think they'll be dangerous enough up forward to cause people problems. It's just the way he coaches. It just is. It is what it is. But um, in terms of their players, I think the Pooh might start early. I think he'll he'll be a good pickup. Jack Steele, obviously a gun. Crouch, I'm not fully sold on. Um, Gresham's very, very good. Uh, Josh Battle's the interesting one for me. I feel like they've really unsettled him a little bit by chucking him at both ends of the ground. He was kind of like a Mr. Fixit in some aspects. So it'd be interesting to see if they let him settle in one particular section of the ground to uh, get the most out of him. Jackie Higgins, Dan Butler. Again, like, there's one, there were some of those players that you were disappointed to lose at the time, but I don't think they've made that much of a profound impact on St Kilda either. Good role players, uh, but not the end of the world. Uh, for tomorrow night's game, I tipped Richmond by 16, but I wouldn't be shocked if the Blues beat us. Wouldn't be shocked at all. And we'll head over to Frio. Dockers. So they're probably another team. I I think they kind of caught a few people by surprise last year with how many games they won, um, and they're probably widely tipped to win a few more. So are they maybe one that people think they could fall out of the eight? I don't know, but they you know they've only really strengthened their side, so maybe that's less likely than likely. But Yago Mira, good addition. Assuming that he's all his knee stuff holds together. Uh, Nat Fife. Did he get injured? Is he still... Is he in line for, for round one? Sean Darcy, I think, is a, a good ruck forward. Brayshaw. Like, they, they... They've got the makings of a good a good list. Caleb Sarong, I think, is another one that does really well. Uh, I think... Yeah, I do think Cripps will have another good year. Uh, we were saying during that game... This blues that Cripper is probably in that player type that you, you can't actually tag him. You can mind him, you can look after him at contests and try and curb his influence, but he's going to find the ball 25 plus times a game. So the best you can hope for is applying enough pressure to his disposal to make it ineffective. I think that's as, as good as you can kind of get, but he will he will still have a good year, Crips. Uh, what's everyone vibing for Freo this year? So, Nick, you reckon they'll get better this year? Anyone else in the greens about Frio climbing? I think the line for them for season wins was at 14. <clears throat> so, I'm interested to see if they'll get to 14 or not. See, uh, being in Melbourne, I think you can sort of safely say that their, their players probably don't get the credit they deserve being in WA. And even as far back as Pavlich, I always thought he was actually underrated from uh, Melburnians. That port lineup looks good too. Alright, for the last game of the round, St Kilda versus Fremantle. Who is going to win? What margin have we got? Okay, so Grok, you reckon they'll fit in the 6-10 to 10 mark? 
Yeah, I can see that. I think it'll be closer to the six mark, though. Uh, where's my wheels? I think Fremantle are going to win this game um, by about <coughs> 25 points. I just think it comes down to Ross's game style for me. Unless he's had an epiphany and he's now going to attack, um, I just think he's going to cripple St Kilda's ability to score. And I know that's very presumptuous based on history, but that's all we can go off, I guess. Uh, and the fact that Frio are a very strong side and are going to be staking a claim to be playing finals uh, and causing some damage. Uh, Grok went Freo by 29. Das Blues Freo by 40. I think both very plausible outcomes. For the last leg of the nine-legged multi, the wheel says, please, for the love of God, Freeman, give me some hope. Yes, there it is, Freo. So, to recap the tips from the wheel for the nine-legged multi, I'm only going to put a dollar on, so we're not breaking the bank, it's just for a bit of a laugh. The wheel has picked Carlton, oh, Geelong. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the follow, Blues. Much appreciated. The wheel has picked Carlton, Geelong, Eagles, Lions, Bulldogs, Swans, GWS, Hawks, and Frio. So, not, not the worst multi going around, I suppose. It probably stands half a chance, but we'll we'll see how it pans out. Nah, no worries, Bood. <laughs> Oh, good, mate. Thank you so much for popping by and for the follow. Much appreciated. I'll, I'll make sure I jump onto your other socials and, uh, and follow back. So go, go Tigers and Dons this weekend. And same to you, mate. I appreciate and love the content you're putting out. Like I said, the more of us we can put out positive vibes for AFL 23, the better. Um, I think we're both on the same page that we think it's going to be the best, <coughs> the best AFL game we've seen from what, you know, we're sort of seen and heard from the people that we know in the industry. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can get some stuff out on the 22nd that impresses the, the haters. Um, but yeah, pretty pumped to, to see someone like yourself right behind it as well. So I'll, we'll keep smashing it out and see if we can get a few more people over the line. But no, I appreciate you dropping by on the follow, mate. Uh, have a good night. Go Western for the weekend. Hopefully you get a nice win. I uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. So thank you. But uh, yeah, we'll chuck our, our multi on. We'll see how we go. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think we might try and do something like this once a week. I know it went for an hour or something. I could probably cut that down at some stage. But I think it's good to look at all the different games and see what's going to happen. So hopefully everyone enjoyed having a chat about the footy. Uh, yes, definitely watching the game tomorrow, being a Richmond supporter. I, I was going to go, but uh, my young fella's got kinder the next day. And my wife won't get home from work in time to kind of give me time to get into the ground. So little bit of a set of circumstances stopping me from going but i'll go to most other home games that we've got but hopefully it's a good game it's going to be a good night at least at least it's not pouring rain or anything like that but um like i said i wouldn't be shocked if the blues got us but i think on paper yeah 27 tomorrow ridiculous at one stage it was 35 crazy but no, it should be should be a good game was there was that did any, everyone enjoy going through games like that tonight? I'm happy for any type of feedback, whether you want to do it now on Discord, in private, whatever it might be. I just thought talking about the AFL was something a little bit different. I know there's a lot of footy fans out there. Um, and everyone's got different views and feedback and opinions. I just thought it'd be a bit of fun to do a $1 multi with some wheel spins, just something a bit different. Um, like I said, Grok, you know, we've done the Richmond pod for what, seven years now, whatever it is, five years, six years. It's just something a bit different to branch out and talk about other teams. So, good bit of fun. But, um, thank you to everyone for stopping by tonight. Much appreciated. Thank you for, for the new follows for the Blues and Bood for dropping by as well. Much appreciated. Good to have you both on board. There's seven years this year. My God. So, yeah, we'll definitely do this um, at least once a week. And then, outside of that, we'll stream our games like normal. So... A massive, massive, massive shout out to the Hound who went absolutely berserk uh, with, what, over a thousand bits, 10 gifted subs, mate, you're an absolute superstar. You know there's no need to do that. Like, I just love doing this for getting to know everyone and building a community, but I absolutely love you and your support um, is very, very much appreciated. So, but make sure you do hold on to some coin to get your prime, your beans and AFL 23, mate. So 
you're a superstar. Make sure that we get around the hound as well in his um, AFL fantasy comp and tipping comp as well. He's got some prizes up for grabs. Make sure we um, jump into that too. So we'll be back on. I won't be on tomorrow night because I'll obviously be watching the footy. Um, but if you you'll probably see me tweeting from the Big Footy Tiger Cast account for those Tiger spotters out there, so make sure you interact and get involved with that. Hopefully, we can all be celebrating together. But we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. But on that, hope you. Yeah, well, the pod was good. I'm glad the stream went just as well. I'm sure there'll be things I'll tweak and get better at. But um, oh, I thought it was right. Like I said, if anyone's got any feedback, ideas for this type of footy stream, seriously, sing out, let me know. There's no... Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Um, I'm happy to tweak and adjust and make it as good as we can get it. So, But no, thank you for everyone's love and support. Much appreciated. The Hound, again, you're the man. Thank you. Um, the Blues, thank you for dropping by as well and your follow. And Boot, again, it was great to, to be able to chat to you after sort of following your work on TikTok as well. So make sure we get behind Boot and his work in supporting AFL and AFL 23. But have a good night, everybody, and stay safe. Good luck for the footy this weekend for all your respective teams, and we'll speak soon. Go Tigers.